The Katsukiya Network presents Riven on Jazz with your host, Howard Robertson and Melvin Massey. Sonny Rollins. You got to improve, man. You got Coltrane and Hornet Coleman and these boys coming up. You better get your stuff together. Mr. Miles Davis. The white people are funny. They, in America, they thought that I just woke up one morning and had the blues and started playing the trumpet. But it don't go like that. And you can't explain that to them. Miles was able to make something that was wrong into something that was right. Now they know. I'm not an accident. We're back. Hello and welcome to Riffin' on Jazz. I'm Howard Robertson. And I'm Alvin Massey. And... As you know, Riffin' on Jazz is your weekly visit with friends, talking about the music that we love. It is the classic African-American art form called jazz. Malvin Massey How you doing, Jr. Dr. Robertson? How are you, sir? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I good, good. Glad you here. could make it on another bowling night. Yes. You I'm... know, y'all, our wives think that uh, we're out bowling, although we don't leave the house with a bag or shoes or anything. <laughs> uh, I sneak out, though. Yes, yes. Uh, Still. We, we tell I don't them we want to miss stuff the night. In the car. Yeah, no, exactly, the exactly. Night. Today, we are riffing on jazz TV themes, and um, I'm going to apologize profusely in advance yes. uh, for letting everybody in the studio and subsequently all of uh, the world down because we don't have a more catchy title. That's my job, and uh, apparently... On this one, I failed freeze. miserably. A brain freeze, but you know these things happen as you age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, my, my back was against the wall, and I, and I and I froze. And and uh, anyway, so jazz TV themes. We're gonna get right into it with uh, one of the greatest ones of all time. I'm not gonna tell you what it is or from where it is. You're gonna know. Riffing on jazz TV themes. I love Lucy. She loves me We're as happy As two can be Sometimes we quarrel But then How we love Making up again Lucy kisses like no one can She's my missus and I'm her man And life is heaven, you see Cause I love Lucy I love Lucy and as I mentioned, Lucy loves me.
There's a reason why I love Lucy from Michael Franks <laughs> from his Dragonfly Summer CD from 1993 and that was of course I, I love, love Lu- Lucy <laughs> you got some explaining to do <laughs> one of the most famous and one of the original sitcoms ever in the world and yeah. if you didn't see that episode you wouldn't know that the song had the theme had lyrics yeah yeah Beautiful lyrics. It was the uh, the Christmas show, the last. Oh, was last that the show. Christmas show? It was the well, it was it was the last show. Okay, it okay. Was the last show they did. So the theme from uh, from uh, I Love Lucy, little background theme from I Lo- Love Lucy was written by um, a guy named Elliot Daniel, and he did it as a favor for uh, his Coast Guard old Coast Guard buddy, whose name was Jess Oppenheimer who was one of the show's producers. And okay. he he was under contract with uh, Fox. Elliot Daniel was was under contract with Fox. So he wrote this as a favor to Oppenheimer. And he said, look, man, just leave my name off of it and whatnot. I don't want any hassle, so just leave my Is name off. Right? You know. Now, I, I think on the copyright, his name is on there. But on the show, he didn't get show credit. So, um, obviously, show went on to be a humongous hit. Um, it was the most watched show in the United States for four of the six seasons it was on. Wow. And it was one of those shows that ended with the Nielsen ratings up at the top, like Seinfeld did later on and a couple of other shows. And it was the first scripted television program to be shot on 35 millimeter film in front of a studio audience. audience right, right, mm-hmm. right. That's his. And it there. could not have been done more beautifully with more textures and more layers than my, you just heard Michael Frank do it. Yeah, that orchestration was beautiful. Oh, you kept man. talking about the flutes. Oh man, <sighs> that's music. That is music. And and as we were talking, that is. Uh, those arrangements are the kind of arrangements that contemporarily, you know who wrote? Isaac Hayes. Isaac you know, Hayes. now that you mention it, though, and you remember the structure of some of those some of those songs that Isaac Hayes arranged? Absolutely. Yeah. He, With the strings and all of that. Know, and you, and, and we know, we talked about it. He used the Memphis Symphony um, strings. Yeah, so. Layer upon layer. So, uh, that was a really cool experience, though. When that show came on, I was three months old. So we go from that to another very, very famous one that um, you may or may not recognize. We certainly do because the TV show was so phenomenal when it was out. And what you're going to hear is Dave Grusin's version of Peter Gunn.
a thing from Peter Gunn. <laughs> I love that. But my man Dave Grusin, now Malvin, you know, I believe in my heart that Dave Grusin uh, spent some time either in the Sanctified Church or the <laughs> Baptist Church. Why do you say that, man? Well, I'm going to tell you. Well, I'm going to explain it to you. <laughs> so Dave Grusin has this little gospelly bounce or uh, this, uh, this, this little yeah. feel. This little, it's, it's, it's churchy. It's sanctified. It's, it's, you know, and he, and and he incorporates it in most everything, everything that he, he does. does. Have you yeah. felt that? Oh you, yeah. You heard it on Peter it then, Gunn just then on that version of Peter Gunn. Right. The cat did that song Two for the Road CD. He did the music of Henry Mancini because Mancini was his friend, uh, and and. What's his friend rather? And Mancini, Henry Mancini wrote that, of course, way back then. Right. Uh, the Peter Gunn theme was so popular that the, it was best remembered by the music, by and uh, he was nominated for an Emmy and two Grammys for Henry Mancini uh-huh. for writing it. But um, Dave Grusin knew Mancini right. too. He, he, he performed that with the Henry Mancini's. 75 piece Henry Mancini Orchestra, my wow. uh, orchestra out of Miami, Florida. You know, in the last break, I mentioned Isaac Hayes. Well, yeah. uh, and in a previous show, I mentioned that I was told that um, the people at the studio were a little nervous about Isaac really finishing Shaft, the music for Shaft. Yeah. So they hired Henry Mancini to stand, stand on, on standby in case. Uh, Isaac didn't finish it. They had to fire him, and they would bring on Henry Mancini. <laughs> Isaac messed him up, <laughs> turned in everything on time, and it and it won an Oscar. But you know, uh, they had Mancini in the wings. Yeah, yeah Henry, he's so got your plenty. shaft could have come from him. He's got Henry plenty Mancini. of them. I tell you what, he's got plenty of Emmys and Grammys and all that. This but, is uh, true. Yeah, this that was is a true. great track. Though. That was a great track. Everybody remembers Peter Gunn. There you go. So that brings us to um, Massimo Ferrao. How do you Almost pronounce this guy? Very name? good. Massimo. Massimo. Italian. The last name is Ferrao? Ferrao. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. And he <laughs> he's doing a uh, jazz take on a uh, very popular TV theme. I'm not going to tell you the name of this one either. You will know.
And that's music from Massimo Ferrao, and you know it as the Flintstones. The modern Stone Age family. <laughs> it's from his CD that came out in 95 uh, on the Monad label. They mm. haven't heard much from them in a long time. Mm-hmm. It's called Chow, baby. <laughs> yeah, uh, Flintstones yeah. theme was uh, written by a guy named Hoyt Curtin. And uh, you wouldn't know the name just right off the bat, but Hoyt Curtin uh, was responsible for a whole lot more than just the Flintstones. Yeah. Uh, the Jetsons. Part of Hanna-Barbera. Yes. Yeah. All of the, he wrote music for all of this stuff. The Jetsons, meet George Jetson. Mm. Um, Yogi. Yeah, Yogi Bear and uh, uh, so oh, many, man. the Deputy Dog. And all of the stuff that we used to sit there mindlessly and watching <laughs> all our lives, right? Yeah. And this Italian cat picks this up, man. Massimo Ferrao, he didn't come to the States till about 90. And it's straight ahead. Yeah. That's what I love. I mean, he made the Flintstones a straight ahead <laughs> jazz piece. That's 83, cool. that's when he first came to the States. That is cool. So, uh, we unapologetically uh, drink wine on this show. Why? Because wine is a vital part of the whole attitude and lifestyle of jazz. So yeah. today, Malvin, we are drinking something called Red Tree. Yeah. It's a Pinot Noir from California. Well, it's very tasty. You like it? Yeah. Okay, so grab your glass right. by the stem. Yes. Because the servants <laughs> talk, touch the other part. <laughs> so we, we live libations to life, love and jazz. And remind you that if you happen to miss any of the Riffin' on Jazz episodes, do not panic. Just go to your favorite podcast provider or the Kazookian.com network and you know we're on the radio. We're on the radio on broadcast too. Oh, WUMR U92 FM and WVON Chicago. Where is WUMR? Memphis, Tennessee. That's exactly right. University and WVON on Ch- in Chicago is on the iHeart our radio media platform. You're listening to Riffin' on Jazz on the Kazookian Network, and we'll be back right after this with much more. Riffin' on Jazz. Kazookian's Riffin' on Jazz. Three. Am I going to sit there and argue with you over we had steak two days ago, right. I want chicken. B. It's going to be spicy all of the time. I don't <laughs> so, care if I'm single now. C. I think that the foundation is how you were brought up. Three black chicks on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian. Virginia White of Earth, Winning Fire, and you're listening to Written on Jazz, powered by the Kazookian Network. Welcome back to Riffin' on Jazz TV themes. Uh, we're having a good time. Yeah. We're having a really, really good time. It brings uh, a lot of memories thinking, back. Absolutely. Taking a walk back through our childhoods. Um, and all the TV shows that we grew up watching uh, and the music that we grew up singing and knowing and listening to jazz versions of these. Um, And the next one, Malvin, is really, really interesting. By a cat named uh, Randy Waldman. Randy Waldman got the idea for doing this next cut. He was somewhere sitting yeah, they, next they at a, 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 a convention a, at a, a, a comic con convention I think something, something like that, that sitting yeah. next to adam west yeah. and for those of you who don't know adam west was batman was the original television batman and uh adam west professed this love of jazz and of course randy wallman is a is a jazz pianist a legend yeah. among other things <laughs> did you know that he's also a helicopter and airplane uh, pilot yeah yeah, award-winning has, helicopter pilot. has the speed record in a Bell OH something 58 helicopter. But anyway. And um, a piano player, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. He can, he can play. So on this one, he decided to get a little help from his friends. And uh, they on include. The, uh, on the CD. Uh, the CD is called uh, um, Superheroes. Uh-huh. Because that was what inspired him to do it was talking to Adam West. But uh, yeah, superheroes is full of. of oh, oh! Uh, he's got super heroic uh, jazz musicians like yeah. Chick Corea, um, Eddie Daniels, Ch- uh, George Benson, Randy Brecker, uh, Steve Gadd, Take Six, Vin uh, Coliuda. <laughs> yes, and this next cat that you're gonna hear a tremendous hard bop solo on this cat's rendition 
of Batman.
heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Randy Walden. Batman. The man, that is so Art involved. Bob. Randy Walden's been in the Ranger forever. He was Barbara Streisand's music director for years. Mm-hmm. And he's been in the Ranger. He can take those songs. He can take a song that you recognize and keep it recognizable and just... Polyrhythmic. Re- yeah, yeah, polyrhythmic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he played with that one though. Went Marsalis on the trumpet, of yes, course. Yes, yes. The original was uh, written by Neil Hefty, and the show I thought it premiered in '65, but the research I did said '66. '66, okay. But okay. anyway, and on that original pow bang and mm-hmm, all of that stuff, mm-hmm. everybody thought it was horns doing that. Actually, it was the Ron Hicklin singers making those sounds on the original TV score. What? It wasn't horns. Those weren't horns. singers. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> yeah, trip me out. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. Anyway. I get to be an old, old man and I find <laughs> out. That's <laughs> And listen, I want to thank y'all for all of your enthusiasm and whatnot when I see you out and, and you know, your praise of uh, riffing on jazz is phenomenal. We appreciate it. Let me tell yeah. you. Let me tell you. We appreciate it. And for that very reason, I just sat here and learned something. Um, and that's what you guys tell us all the time. So we appreciate I you. I wholeheartedly listening. concur. Yes. 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 So here we go now to um, another <laughs> bad cat. Um, pianist, uh, saxophonist, composer, uh, arranger, and so forth. Um, he is the leader of the Gordon Goodwin f- Big Fat Band. <laughs> With a P-H-A-T. Big P-H-A-T <laughs> band. And, um, I mean, this guy's got a, a tremendous uh, uh, background and, and um, pedigree. And we're going to hear first uh, him get into all in to the theme from Get Smart. Don Adams, would you believe?
Get Smart, <laughs> circa 1965. That was Gordon Goodwin's big fat band. Yeah. PHT. I love that <laughs> arrangement of that song. He had so many things slipping in and out of there. That's the way he arranges to Gordon Goodman. He's a heck of a musician, man. He, he yeah, an arranger. and I love the rhythms, man. I love the rhythms. The Big Fat Band is an 18-piece uh, orchestra that combines the big band swing of the 1930s and 40s with the contemporary music um, like funk and jazz. Yeah. So, and that uh, was written by Irving Zethmary. That's his name, <laughs> Irving Zethman. Don't. And he's basically is a forgotten composer because nobody really knew who originally composed it because they came back on a composer that had done it at a later time. Were well, you a big uh, Get Smart fan? Oh, man, Max, are you kidding? I yeah. love Max Will Smart. He's the stupidest person on the planet, but he always <laughs> came out on top. <laughs> yeah, yeah, always, always, talking in his shoe. <laughs> so we always, uh, we always acknowledge and thank you uh, wherever you are in the world for listening uh, to us uh, on Riffin' on Jazz. And that includes Tobias Wagner from Salzburg, Austria. And Heinrich Schaefer from Cologne, Germany. Nicole Adams from Chicago. Michael Castellano, Michael Castellani from Verona, Italy. Emilia Kowalski from Turan, Poland. David Abia from Valencia, Spain. And Linda Parks and Tyrone Easley and my friend Janet Hooks, all from Memphis, Tennessee. Right on. <laughs> You're listening to Riffin' on Jazz on the Kazookian Network. We'll be back for more after this. This is Melvin Massey, and you're listening to Riffin' on Jazz on the Kazookian Network. R&R on Sports is proud to be on Sirius XM. So what's R&R stand for? Real talk and relevant sports issues. It's racial and relative. We're brothers from the South. We can relate. R&R has meaningful multiplicity. Listen to you all polysyllabic and alliterative. R&R is Larry Robinson and Howard Robertson conversing, challenging, and always chuckling. <laughs> R&R on Sports, part of the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Hey, this is saxophonist Dirk Whalem, and you're listening to Riffin' on Jazz, powered by the Kazookian Network. Yes, we are riffing on jazz. TV themes. I forgot to mention, I don't want Gordon Goodman to be mad at me. That was from his CD, Life in the Bubble. That track was from right. Life in the Bubble from 2014. Now, okay. we move forward. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> We're moving on to a, uh, a typically gospel cat who has yeah. what, like, crazy number of Grammys and stellar awards to his credit he is yeah. uh, probably one of the most successful and uh, quintessentially identifiable gospel instrumentalist and his yeah. name is Ben Tanker straight out of Nashville Tennessee uh, n- nice cool. <laughs> and <laughs> so he has um, I think he has a, a, a CD called, what is it, Cantankerous? Cantankerous, yeah. It's Full Tank, Volume 3, Cantankerous. Mm-hmm. He's got one out called Full Tank, and then this is in Full Tank, Volume 2, and Cantankerous, Volume 3. And so this cut cut comes off of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and i tell you what really, Cord Martin is playing horn on it, and I was sitting in my office with Kirk Wayne one day we would... He was getting ready to do something and I was just listening to it. It was brand new to mm-hmm, me at the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm listening to these licks and I was thinking all the time when I was listening, it was Kurt. Mm. And it's now it's Cord Martin, a cat out of Nashville who sounds kind of like him. And there's a lick in this song and I was referring back to it. Kirk said, man, that's a gospel lick. <laughs> that's why it's in there. <laughs> You'll hear it. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. We are talking about the theme from the incredibly successful show called Love Boat.
boat yeah. from Cantankerous. The love boat. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I had the pleasure of meeting um, Ted Lange from who played Isaac. Yeah, the bartender. Uh, the bartender on Love Boat uh, just last week. Is that right? Fantastic. Guy. Oh, I didn't even know he was from here. Isn't oh, he's it? not from he's here. He's not from here. Uh-uh, he's oh, from okay. I think he grew up in L.A. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, still very, very active, especially on the theater, um, the black theater scene. So. Yeah. Well, that Love Boat theme, that was written uh, by... What was that thing? At? Yeah, anyway, that was sung by Jack Jones. I know that place going to be remembered. Charles Fox. That's who wrote it. Charles Ira Fox wrote that. And uh, the lyrics were by Paul Williams. Oh, really? Yeah. Paul yeah. Williams was a was a very prolific lyricist. Oh, heck yeah. He, he wrote, wrote a lot, lot of stuff. stuff. Yeah, Jack Jones. They made that song famous. That track, the way that Ben Tanker does that track with that Latin pop in it and that gospel, you hear that gospel lick mm-hmm, in there? Mm-hmm. It's That's what you were talking about, yeah. It is stimulating. <laughs> so, yeah. um, that brings us to uh, another fantastic TV show featuring um, one of our own homegirls, homegirls yeah. from Memphis, Tennessee. Her name is Sybil Shepard, and uh, she did this little TV show for some years mm-hmm. with a guy named uh, Bruce Willis, and the name of the show was Moonlighting. Um, and they were two private detectives, um, and the you know the show was a combination of uh, drama, comedy, and mystery and romance. So um, we are going to hear this guy perform this theme song, and I think he, he, wrote he did the he wrote it. He wrote it, and uh, along with Lee Holdridge. Al oh, wow. and Lee Holt. Oh, oh, wow. I let the cat out of there. Yeah, you did. I wasn't going to say, but it's <laughs> Moonlighting by the incomparable Al Jarreau.
one lady, the great Al Jarreau. <laughs> My man, Alwyn Lopez Jarreau. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's I, I didn't know. Not Alvin, but Alwyn. Well, that theme song was from 85 to 89. The, the show was from 85 to 89. That's mm-hmm. when it came out. Al Jarreau was the composer of it. I didn't know that. I didn't either until I started great. reading up on it or this, for this show, which you always make me have to do all the work, but that's okay. I don't that's, know. That's okay. That's but, okay. Uh, <laughs> Reading is fundamental. It's good for it's you. Good. <laughs> but that one right there, Moonlight, that was a lot of fun. Al Jarreau and uh, what was his name? Lee Holden uh-huh. wrote that. that and the show was very popular. It was a very, very popular show. I think rated as number 24 or 25 or something like that. Yeah, on the, uh, all time. 100 greatest TV shows of yeah, all time. In 87, it was. it was number 23 on the contemporary, on the Billboard chart, rather. And it's been a week at number one on the adult contemporary chart. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, wow. So, who are stuff. we going out with? Okay. Now, it is Charles Ruggiero. Okay. Is the artist, and the CD is called As Heard on TV. Mm-hmm. And on that CD, on this CD, Charles Ruggiero has a lot of uh, different TV show songs on it. But uh, this one, it's my favorite. Yeah, this one is cool. Everybody, everybody recognizes it in a heartbeat. It was written by Mike Post. And if you remember Mike Post, uh, he's written music. Yeah, he's written a lot of music. The SUV for uh, AT, NYPD Blue, Renegade, The Rockford Files, LA Law, Quantum Leap, Magnum PI, all of those shows. Wow. Stephen J. Connell wrote them. Wow. Yeah. He did the music. Everybody knows this. What's the name of it? Law. And order. Yes, yes, very dramatic. <laughs> and you know, Malvin, uh, if we were cheese, they might call us aged. And if we were cars, they may call us classic. If we were wine, they may call us vintage. They probably would, but we call ourselves blessed and very highly favored to be here with you here every week on Riffin' on Jazz. I'm Howard Robertson. I'm Malvin Massey. We ask y'all to be good, be well, and please be back with us next week for more. Riffin' on Jazz. Riffin' on Jazz. Executive produced by Kazukian. Co-host by Howard Robertson and Malvin Massey Jr. Music curation by Howard and Malvin. And recorded at Kazukian Studios. Riffin' on Jazz. Part of the Kazukian Network. Network.